Hi, today we're going to talk about the major crime labs and their basic services. So in the United States, there are four major federal crime labs. Um, the FBI runs one, the DEA runs one, ATFE has one, and the USPS has one. So we'll take a look at all four of them. Um, the federal crime labs are in charge of any evidence at the federal level um, that the U.S. government needs um, to be processed for any cases that they're running or investigating, etc. So the first one we're going to take a look at, the first agency we're going to take a look at is the FBI's. Okay, so the Federal Bureau of Investigation, they run actually the largest crime lab in the United States, also probably the largest crime lab in the entire world. It um, is huge. It's located in Virginia, okay, and this is what it looks like, okay? It's multiple buildings, locations. Um, it's pretty cool to take a look at and check out if you get a chance to go to the website. Um, it's pretty cool. You can take a look at the laboratory positions that are there. You can take a look at um, some of the cutting edge systems that are coming out for DNA and databases and different things like that. So if you get a chance, you should definitely check that out. Um, but the FBI's crime lab um, holds all the major databases and runs them. So CODIS, which is the DNA database, IBIT, um, NIBIN, which is the bullets and cartridges database, uh, IAFIS, which is fingerprints, all of that's run through the FBI's crime lab. The FBI's crime lab, not only does it do federal level lab processing, but it also um, helps out at the state level. So for example, say that there was a specific crime that happened in Phoenix and the Phoenix crime lab that was here um, didn't have the personnel to process the evidence or didn't have the equipment for a specific piece of evidence, they would send it to the FBI's crime lab. They would process it and send them the results. So the FBI's crime lab definitely um, does major support for the state level crime labs if it's something above their expertise or knowledge. Uh, the Drug Enforcement Agency, the DEA, um, their crime lab kind of specifically focuses on analysis of drugs for federal cases. Um, so obviously the agency themselves focus is um, drugs in the United States and so their lab specifically focuses on toxicology and um, drug analysis and things like that so at this at the federal level any major drug cases that go down they're the ones that process all that evidence and again they also support this at the state level so if there's you know a huge massive drug ring that gets um, swept up in certain states it would then go to the DEA's level and they would process all that evidence as they um, kind of have the state-of-the-art technology for it. The ATFE is Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Um, ATF mainly focuses on firearms and explosives, although they do, do also do alcohol and tobacco, but their crime lab focuses on firearms and explosives. Um, they play a huge role in um, NIBIN, which is the database for ballistics. Um, entering data and inputting for the different firearms that are coming out, new models, makes, different things like that. Um, they also are the ones, if there is like, the, for example, the Boston bombing, they would have been the investigators that went out for that. That evidence from the bombing would have been taken to their lab to be processed, to be evaluated, etc. And then the fourth one is kind of, it's kind of a different one. It's the United States Postal Service. Um, they actually have their own crime lab as well, and their crime lab mainly focuses on mail fraud. Um, but they they have state of the art technology to take a look at um, you know counterfeit um, counterfeit mail, any type of fraud that's being done through the postal service. And you would be surprised how much kind of work that they get through that taking a look at entering things entering and exiting the United States and different things like that um, as far as um, mail services go. So those are the four uh, major crime labs that the federal government runs. They do have other crime labs, but these are kind of like your big guns that they would basically put most of their money into. Um, so now we're going to talk about the basic services offered at pretty much any forensic lab. So 
a basic lab, say the city of Glendale, city of Phoenix, city of Mesa, anything like that, they're gonna have these basic services. So there's gonna be units or sections of the crime lab that um, will have at least one person usually that's competent in running analysis for these basic services. So the physical science unit is the first one and it's the identification and comparison of physical evidence. So this unit would focus on like drugs and explosives, soil and rocks, um, glass, scratches, paint, anything like that. So the physical science unit is going to focus on basically identification and comparison of any type of physical evidence. Um, so you'll have your chemist working in here, your physicist often working in here, and they're going to be taking a look at the physical side, physical evidence side of things. Okay, so that's your first kind of basic service that all crime labs will have. The second unit is the biology unit. Um, in order to work in the biology unit, usually you need a degree in biology, biochemistry, or these days it's molecular biology because pretty much everything is DNA based now. Um, and the evidence that's going to be sent to the biology unit are going to be things like blood stains, bodily fluids, hair fibers, botanical materials, anything biological. Okay, so this is going to be your saliva, um, blood stains, blood spatter, semen, hair, anything like that. That's all going to go to the biology unit. The third unit. Um, that most all crime labs will always have is a firearms unit, okay? The firearms unit is going to be um, usually run by um, trained police officers, police officers that have a lot of knowledge on weapons and arms and different things like that, and they usually will run the basic part of the lab and they'll do the firearm testing, they have usually a huge water tank, they have a firing field, um, and they're able to test multiple different weapons and um, discharge them and um, collect all the evidence from it. And then they're also able to do analysis and compare um, bullets and cartridges against each other and run them through Niven and different things like that. So the firearms unit will take a look at firearms, the different parts of ammunition, cartridges and shells, uh, bullets, and then any other garments. And so they're able to take a look at all that stuff and process it. Uh, the Phoenix Crime Lab in Arizona downtown has a really, really cool firearms unit. They have, it's like down in the basement and they have a really good setup for it. The fourth basic service offered at most crime labs is the documentation examination unit. Um, this is going to deal with handwriting, typewriting, printing. A lot of times they'll do computer analysis. They can dabble a little bit in um, some of the online activity that happens, paper and ink analysis, different things like that. So this is gonna be um, burn documents, counterfeit money, um, forge documents, forge papers, identifications, all that type of stuff will run through the documentation unit. Um, and actually DPS's crime lab that's in Arizona has a really, really extensive documentation examination unit. Um, they're kind of the experts in the state of Arizona for that. So in the state of Arizona, most cities have their own crime lab. The city of Phoenix is, is the largest in the state. Uh, but Mesa has its own crime lab. Glendale has a smaller crime lab. Tucson has a smaller crime lab. And then other cities say that they, if they have a crime that happens and they can't, process that evidence because they don't have the availability of a crime lab or expertise or things like that, they'll send it to the other cities and the other cities will process it for them and send it back. So Glendale may send something to the Phoenix Crime Lab, the Phoenix Crime Lab would then process it and send the evidence back. Um, so they definitely kind of all help each other out in different ways. And then there's also what we call optional services. Some of the bigger crime labs will have additional um, areas located within them because of the amount of evidence that they're receiving daily. So for example, most of the bigger um, crime labs will have a photography unit. There's two or three people and that's their dedicated job. They photograph evidence and they process photographs. Um, photographs record, photographs from the crime scene, etc. Like that's their only job is to photograph evidence and um, print pictures and things like that. Like that's all that they do. There's also in most of the labs these days now um, a latent fingerprint unit. Same thing. 
two or three people and that's their dedicated job is to process, collect fingerprints and analyze them. So they might collect them off of evidence that's been taken back to the lab. Um, once they've collected them, they'll run them through IAFIS, which is the database. Once they think they found matches, they actually identify, et cetera, et cetera. And that's their sole job is to work on fingerprints every part of the day. Um, a polygraph unit, some labs, some of the bigger labs will have a polygraph unit where they have people that know how to um, run a polygraph test correctly, um, run results for it, and that's their sole job. Uh, this isn't a super common one, but usually in the state there's at least one lab that has a polygraph unit so that it can be used if needed. A toxicology unit, they actually started um, kind of farming this out in the last five to seven years. Uh, because they were getting so many pieces of evidence that needed tox run, um, tox reports run. They were getting all the DUI cases. They were getting um, all the bodies from the morgue needed to have tox run on them, so on and so forth, that they sort of got overwhelmed with this just at the crime lab level. And so they started um, hiring out companies that actually run the tox reports now and then send the results back to the crime lab. So some of the smaller crime labs will have a toxicology unit, um, but some of the bigger ones will hire companies to run the tox reports and then send the evidence back to them. Voice print analysis units. Um, this is where they're gonna take a look at um, electronics, videos that are posted on the internet, cell phone records, different things like that. An evidence collection unit, almost every crime lab has an evidence collection unit, like the city of Phoenix has, uh, last time we were there they had four separate units. So four sets of people that worked, you know, like a 24 hour shift on, and their sole job is when a crime happens, they're called out to the scene and they process and collect all the evidence at the scene and then they bring it back. And sometimes if the crime scene's huge, they send two or three people. Sometimes they only need one, depending on what it is. But their job is literally just to go to crime scenes and process and collect all the evidence. That's the only thing they do. They don't analyze it once it gets back to the lab. They just process it and collect it from the actual scene itself. And then the engineering unit, this is becoming um, a more popular unit um, in the last couple of years. Uh, because they're finding that they like to have reconstructions of crimes for the juries to see in court. And so what the engineering unit does is once all the evidence is collected, everything has been analyzed, they basically take and make a 3D computer model of the crime scene and they kind of show what they think happened based on where all the evidence is located and found, et cetera, et cetera. And they can kind of make a play-by-play -play, um, 3D model of what actually happened at the crime scene and both the prosecution and defense, depending on, you know, kind of how it fits, like to be able to show those to the jury because it really puts a picture in their head of, um, of what actually happened. So this is becoming a more popular unit. The engineering unit is also called out to almost all um, major um, accidents on the freeway and different things like that because they take a look at um, tire marks and reconstruction of what they think happened in crashes and who was driving what and the speeds and all that type of stuff is what they do. So that's kind of what the engineering unit does. There is also, besides these optional services, there's kind of, um, we're gonna do a specialty services project. There's specialty services like forensic anthropology, where you're a forensic anthropologist, which would be somebody who studies dead, bo um, dead bodies, right? Bones, right? Skeletal remains. Um, and they would have very unique skill sets, right? That might be called in. So there may be two, three, four, five really good anthropologists throughout the entire country, and they get called in on specific cases as they're needed. And so we'll take a look at those types of services um, in our next project. But most of the optional services, most of the bigger crime labs will have options for those. So the last thing I want you to kind of check out is um, where would you send evidence? So if these were the five pieces of evidence, of the four basic services, a physical science unit, a biology unit, a document examination unit, and a firearms unit, where would you send the following evidence? So for example, number one, a bloody t-shirt found at a scene. Would you send that to the physical science unit, the biology unit, the firearms unit, or the document unit? 
a forged check, where would you send that? 